Four years ago, I was 18 years old and I decided to interview my future self, which is me now at age 22, having now graduated from college. So this is going to be interesting. We're just going to see what happens and probably end up talking about life at Stanford and life in general over the past four crazy years. But before we get started, if you don't know me, my name is Dylan Nellis. I am a college admissions coach, and I recently graduated from Stanford University. If you are looking for any sort of college application coaching, advice, or resources and support, you can find all of that at nextgenadmit.com. We have a free masterclass that's going to teach you the top school admissions formula, so I highly recommend you check that out. All right, let's jump in. <music> Hi, so thank you for the introduction. I know this is going to be really weird for you to look back and see this video. So right now I'm 18, hi. <laughs> we are living in the middle of a global pandemic and the numbers just keep getting higher. Masks are the norm. We have to go out with a mask, otherwise it's disrespectful to everybody. I spend most of my days at home just you know, sitting here, sitting at my desk and making videos. I make college app videos and I'm planning on taking a gap year for this next year because I don't really like Stanford's plan for going back. And I think I would do better if I just stayed here for a year and kept learning and doing stuff. And then at the end, I could just, you know, extend my year and then keep going with schooling. All right, I know, I know Dylan, you, you already know about all of that stuff, but just to update everybody on where my life is right now. So first of all, I understand that this, this is going to be cringy for me to look at as I am four years years into the future because I always cringe at my old videos and I get it. I get it. So go ahead and roast me right now if you wish. Oh my gosh. Like <laughs> I, I don't want to roast you because you're just like a baby. And sure, there are things that I didn't know back then, but I feel like now I'm not going to be like, God, I should have known better. I should have done this. I should have looked this way. Like, no, that's who I was at that moment. She's going to learn and grow. And that's like part of life. So I've accepted that now. I'm not going to roast my older self. <laughs> you can also comment on your hair. I know you love to talk about your hair and its journey. I mean, yeah, it's true. My hair is always changing. And I think that's really fun. And I get to express my creativity that way. Sure, I do think that my hair when I got a perm back then was like way curlier than I would have liked it. But we live and we learn. And this is the state of my hair now. It's red and I flat iron it all the time, but who knows what it'll be like in a couple months or a year. So tell me about the world. How long did this pandemic last? Are you still in it? That would be horrible. I hope you're not. I really don't expect you to be still in it. The pandemic, yeah, it's gonna take a while many years. Luckily, we're not in it anymore. I came back to college in 2021 that fall, and then we were still masking for a lot of that year, but it started to loosen up in its restrictions. And then things are pretty much back to normal by the end of that school year. So in like early 2022. Damn, <laughs> if only she'd known that. When you returned to college, how were things different? Did things change at all? Or did it still have that like, lively spirit and you know, parties all the time? Because I kind of don't think that would happen anymore. Were there new permanent restrictions with college? Things did change after college, but honestly, they returned back to normal really quickly, I would say. There were so many parties and so, <laughs> so many events and like all the things that I got to have an experience in my freshman year, I got to have again. That first year coming back, there of course were different restrictions we had to test uh, every week for COVID and wear masks in the classroom. There was some conflict within our dorm community because some people didn't want to wear masks and it was like, oh, well, honestly, I feel like things went back to normal very quickly, which I'm also very happy about because that boosted morale a lot, which I think we all really needed that year. All right, now for the next question. So I am planning on taking a gap year for this next year. So I, I don't really know what's going to happen. And I wonder if I'm going to feel lonely. And I'm definitely going to be like doing projects and learning stuff. But how was the gap year for you? Did you recommend it? Do you think it was worth it in the end? And so how did this gap year influence your education and your life as a whole? Why is this making me emotional right now? <laughs> That's so cute. That's so cute. I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to take this gap year and just see what happens. That's not at all what I envisioned for my life, but it ended up being the 
best choice I could have made with my life. I wish I could tell my younger self that like it is going to be okay. In fact, this gap year is going to change your entire life and like define your career. In that time is when I started to form this business, which is Next Gen Admit, where I help other students get into their dream colleges. And I learned so much about myself. I fell in love with the process of personal growth and personal storytelling. And I love to combine those two things within my coaching, helping other students craft their own personal stories for their college applications. I'm so happy that I'm able to help so many students around the world. So overall, really, really thankful that I took that time off because then when I came back to Stanford, I had three awesome years of being on campus, getting to form that community with other people and experience the real like college life, which I wouldn't have gotten if I just continued everything online. One of the biggest things I realized while in college is that like the point of college, at least for me, was not the classes. At the end of the day, I realized the most valuable thing I got out of going to Stanford were the people and the relationships that I formed, the community and just the whole experience. Like experiences are so, so important. Getting to do things that are new, putting yourself in uncomfortable situations, interacting with different groups of people, going to events, all of those things are what life is all about. So life is not just about studying and learning what you need to learn for your academics or potential career. My senior year ended up being my best year. So I'm so glad that I got to have that year, uh, which I just came from. So 2023 to 2024 was my senior year of college. And in that year is where I actually found and created community. I think it took me a long time. I mentioned in this question, like, was I lonely? Hell yeah, I was so lonely. I had like no friends during this time because I just come from my first year of college and didn't really get the chance to make some super, super deep friendships and hold on to them throughout the year. So I wasn't really staying in touch with anybody. Um, and that was really hard. And now in having just gone through my senior year is where I found people who aligned with me. And it takes time. It really does take time to build these really strong friendships and community. And you kind of have to be there with them in the physical world. Once again, I'm just so glad that I got to spend those years on campus in community, a walkable community too. Oh, another note is that one huge thing that happened while I went back to school is I realized that college or Stanford college in general, was not going to teach me a lot of the tangible, actionable skills that I needed in order to do what I wanted for my career, which is this online business. Because colleges don't teach online business skills. They teach more like corporate business. Not the things that I actually needed to know to run this business. I taught that all to myself. And I learned most of that stuff during my gap year and mo actually mostly after my gap year um, during the summers is when I would invest time and energy and maybe even some money and learn from other online business owners on the internet and join their courses, join their communities. And that's really where I got the education to grow my business and it wasn't college. So that's a huge realization. And I think taking that gap year allowed me to have that realization. Right now I'm planning on majoring in art practice and minoring in symbolic systems. Is that the same thing that you ended up majoring and minoring in? Okay, no, it is not. That's hilarious. My gap year was just so important for me to realize what I wanted out of life. And I had to think a lot about what kind of classes do I actually wanna take? I did not end up majoring in art practice and I did not end up minoring in symbolic systems. I know originally my idea was to combine art with technology. And in freshman year, I was thinking a lot about like, what does that even mean? And I took some art classes that were more like technology oriented that got us to think about digital media in an interesting, trippy, artistic way. But what ended up happening is during my gap year, I thought a lot about this and I was like, do I want to be an artist? Was it, what does it mean to be an artist? And I started to realize I didn't really just want to make art and like that be the only thing I do because it started to feel self-centered <laughs> in a way. I was like, I don't want to just create art that's just like, this is what I'm thinking and I'm feeling and then like sharing it with the world 
for them to praise me and be like, oh, good job. You're such a good artist. You're so talented. Even though I still love art and I'll still do that stuff. But what I wanted to make sure I was doing with my major and with my career path is that I was actually helping people in some way. I'm a very solution oriented person. I love making plans. I love being actionable and I love creating new things that have a purpose to them. I do think art can absolutely have a purpose and it's transformative. I'm constantly inspired all the time by art. For me personally, I wanted to create some sort of more tangible solution to certain problems. And so that's what I ended up doing, creating my own major, which combines design, design thinking and human-centered design with entrepreneurship and business, because I learned that I really liked business just by running this business, Next Gen Admit, and then also combining that with computer science because I wanted the technical skills as well to help build the things that were on my mind. So for right now, when I think about my Stanford experience, I want to make sure that I'm taking advantage of all the opportunities and the resources that they have out there. So what is something that you took advantage of? An opportunity that you took from Stanford and you valued it the most? I think this is very common for a lot of freshmen in college, especially at an institution like Stanford. It's like, oh my God, there's so much stuff that I can explore and I just want to do everything. I want to take every single class. I want to join every club. I know that's how I felt. And that actually really overwhelmed me to a point where it made me very stressed. And I eventually realized that I don't need to do that at all. Just do the things that you are drawn to in that moment and prioritize the things that you care about most. And then the rest will kind of fall into place. By my junior and senior year, I realized that there actually weren't as many things that I wanted to do anymore. Because for example, like once you take a class in design thinking, especially at Stanford, it's just like, okay, now I understand the principles. I don't really need to take all of the classes in design thinking because it is just applying the same exact theory to different applications over and over and over again. Also with clubs, I didn't really end up joining a lot of clubs, which is interesting because I ended up realizing that I could learn a lot of these things on my own, or I already was doing that, or I was already learning these principles in my classes. So I didn't really need that other club, but also a lot of pre-professional clubs like that require a lot of work and a lot of time. And that is also mostly unpaid time, unpaid work. And I felt like for me, because I was already so busy running my company while in college, I was like, I literally can't have any more work, especially if it's not going to be paid because my time is so valuable and so limited at this moment. So it made more sense for me to pour my energy into my business and really grow that. And I think that was the best decision for me. Now to answer the second part of the question, which is what is something that I did take advantage of that I really valued? I'm going to say theater. Honestly, that was the most transformative part of my college experience at least. I did several shows while in college, but I just finished this musical called Huppet. I did that in my spring quarter of my senior year. Huppet is like puppet, but with an H at the beginning. So it's like a human puppet. It was an original musical that two of my friends wrote, Lana and Sebastian, um, about a girl who is half puppet and half human, and she's struggling with her identity as she's writing her college essay, ironically enough, and then she goes to puppet land to reconnect with her family and her culture, and it's nothing how she expects it to be, and there's a lot of family issues and deeper themes that emerge through that journey. And so I got to play that girl. I got to be the lead in that musical. And that was just the most fun ever. That is something that I will fully commit myself to and spend hours and hours. Like I was in rehearsal every single day for multiple hours. And I was totally willing to do that even if it was not paid because that's something that I loved so much and because I got a community out of it. I made some really amazing friends by doing this show. And then from there, got to meet their friends. My circle of friends and community just expanded in a way that was so beautiful and I never had before. So that was so, so important for me to do theater in college. Next question, 
How has your personality changed throughout college? I was definitely in my freshman year trying to be all that and prove to everybody that I was wild and not as innocent and as goody two shoes as I was seen as in high school. I definitely mellowed out a lot during that gap year and kind of into my sophomore year of college as well, especially as I was realizing a lot about well being and mental health and taking things slower and easier on myself and not being so hard and critical on myself as well. And I do think by my senior year, I kind of got back to that like wild, crazy, silly energy that I was describing I had in my freshman year of college, but it was coming from a different place. I think in freshman year, that was more coming from a place of insecurity or trying to prove myself by creating this external persona that I'm not sure how real and authentic that mm, was but now especially in the senior year that I just got to have I do feel like that was true to myself like I was being very extroverted and silly and weird in my little kooky ways and that was so fun and it felt authentic it felt like I was being surrounded by people especially in this theater community where I was able to express this version of myself and it wasn't seen as weird in a bad way I think in freshman year I was just surrounding myself with people who were not like me and so they were like oh okay whereas once you become friends with a bunch of improv people you'll see that everyone's kind of on the same wavelength and has a similar sense of humor and so then I feel more secure in myself to just be bold from a place of authenticity I've, I've actually recently learned this through reading this book called that's bold of you boldness and vulnerability is really admirable and people actually appreciate it people are attracted to it we're often so critical of ourselves and we think that vulnerability makes us look bad when in reality it's not people actually see it as positive when i see other people express their boldness and they do something really silly or really loud or they start singing or breaking out into a song i really admire that because i'm like wow they have that confidence and i i think that's really cool also i really love when i see other people express their vulnerability and they're very open about speaking about their feelings and communicating and not just like pretending to be chill and cool by expressing care by being the realest version of yourself you are taking control of your life. You are being an active participant in your life. So those are some core lessons that I've learned and I'm really excited about. What's one thing right now that you have done or that you are doing that you think that I right now as an 18 year old would be super excited to hear about? I'm traveling. I grew up not really traveling or going on trips or really, really rarely. I think in my family, it was always considered a really big deal to have a trip. And it would just be so much work and planning and figuring things out and the cost and the money and all that stuff that it made me feel like it wasn't really possible. But now it, it is. And I'm so, so happy about that. And so just this summer, I've been able to go to Mexico City and visit my friends there. I went back up to Stanford because I'm in LA right now to visit some other friends. And just like bouncing around is something that is possible for me. That's something that I know my 18 year old self would be stoked to hear about. The fact that yeah, you can just get up and go. I know how to plan. It doesn't have to be a huge deal. Just like sit down and do it. So now that you've graduated, what's your plan for after? What's your after graduation plans? As I kind of mentioned before, I'm running this business full time. I love coaching students on their college applications. It allows me to have a very flexible schedule, which is so nice. I'm really, really grateful that I don't have to be working a typical nine to five job because I do work for myself. And this also frees up my time to do other things. So I'm taking dance class and I want to soon take improv and get back into acting more, audition for other community theater shows, and just get to be creative and get to do all the different things that I enjoy. I think that's something that's really important to me. It's like, yes, I have a lot of interests. I've always known this my whole life. That's why I designed my own major. And I wanna make sure that in my life post college, post school, that I'm still able to tap into all of these different interests that I have. Because you can live a very full life and you don't have to be limited to one thing. Okay, now for my last question, what is the biggest piece of advice that you would give me right now? 
I think my biggest piece of advice to my 18 year old self is to really value my well-being and my mental health and how I spend my time and make sure that I create a balanced life for myself because I know at age 19 is when I started to realize I can't be a workaholic anymore. (laughs) this is not a sustainable lifestyle. I need to find ways where I can balance work with school, with friends and community and myself. I think that's also something that's really important is carving out time for yourself to really do that healing work and that personal growth, like journaling or meditating or just simply being in a space, like being in a park and just sitting and observing the present moment. That's mindfulness. So there you go. All right. That's all the questions that I have for you today. Thank you so much for talking with me. Of course. (laughs) That's, that's kind of weird. Anyways. Um, so I'm just going to leave you to have the last word in case you want to say anything else to wrap up this video on your own. But for me, I'm just going to sign off now. So goodbye everyone. My 18 year old days are now over real i think that was super fun i'm so glad that i did that because now we have this weird video of two versions of me with different hair (laughs) i've learned so much over the past four years and it's really nice to like sit and reflect on that and see how far i've come because i just know me in this video at 18 was in a very different mindset than the person that i am now So thanks for coming along on this journey with me, and I hope to see you soon. You can check out that free masterclass on the top school admissions formula right here at nextgenadmit.com slash masterclass. It's also linked in the description. So I'll see you there as well. All right. Have a good one.